in digital signal processing frequency domain representation of discrete time lti systems are of high significance so let us start by assuming that we have a system which is a linear time invariant system and we know the impulse response of the system which is h of n next we insert the input that is x of n and at the output we will get y of n now assume that the input is a complex exponential that is this input is e to the power j omega n where n is the time index and that is from minus infinity to infinity and n is an integer in discrete time signals and systems furthermore the omega is radians per sample now if we are to give this input to this LTI system so we can calculate the output y of n in terms of a convolution and that is the convolution of the impulse response h of n with the input x of n and from the convolution sum equation that is we shift this h of n to h of k and we flip x of n to x of minus k and then swap it with respect to this variable n so the convolution summation is from minus infinity to infinity h of k x of n minus k so as we need x of n minus k over here so if we insert x and in the argument n minus k so this n would change to n minus k so in the third equality we have e to the power j omega n minus k now in the fourth equality you can observe that the summation variable is k so we can extract out this n because the summation is not going to have an effect on this n so we can extract e to the power j omega n outside of the summation and then we are left with the summation h of k e to the power minus j omega k so do note that this input x of n e to the power j omega n is now appearing again at the output that is this e j omega n is at the output y of n and hence this is called the eigen function so we can say that the complex exponential is the very significant signal that we give at the input of an lti system and this retains itself thus being referred to as the eigen function and the later part of this output is simply an eigen value or a system function which is over here now let us rewrite this system function which is h of k e to the power minus j omega k the summation is from minus infinity to infinity so this is basically the frequency response of the system or you can call it as a transfer function or a system function so this frequency response is in general complex so we can express it in a rectangular form so we can have the real part of this plus the complex part of this and moreover we can write it in a polar form that is we can have the magnitude of this frequency response times exponential to the power phase of the frequency response so this is the magnitude and this is the phase now let us further understand by again considering a system which is having uh, the frequency response expressed over here and we are again giving the exponential function that is e to the power j omega n and at the output we are having the eigen function that is e j omega n times the eigen value that is h of e j omega which is the frequency response however a very important point over here is that this is a very neat and very beautiful expression but it is not generic for example if you are giving another input instead of the complex exponential input this would not hold so you would have to resort back to the convolution sum and from there you would extract the expression so this eigenvalue times the eigenfunction is simply coming from the input which is the complex exponential so hence in this case the eigenfunction is repeating itself over here now if the input is a linear combination of complex exponentials that is we can synthesize this x f n into a simple complex exponentials and each of this complex exponential is weighted by a coefficient a k and we have a summation of these complex exponentials so from the superposition theorem if the input is in the sum weighted sum form so the output would again be in a, a weighted sum form and all of this would repeat itself plus 
this factor which is the eigenvalue would now appear and this eigenvalue is now omega k that is it is dependent on each of the eigenfunction in the summation. So as a summary we can say that linear combination of complex exponentials at the input leads to a linear combination of complex exponentials multiplied by the eigenvalue at the output. So furthermore this expression is also giving us a very important result and that is for a generic discrete time signal x of n. Over here we have an impulse response h of k and this formulation yields the frequency response. Impulse response, frequency response. Now instead of the impulse response we are getting a generic signal which is x of n. So if we take the Fourier transform or more precisely if we are interested in the discrete time Fourier transform of this signal. So we have a more generic expression that is the summation n minus infinity to infinity x of n e to the power minus g omega n which is exactly as this and this yields the discrete time Fourier transform on the left hand side. To note that this expression is called the synthesis expression of the discrete time Fourier transform and its inverse is uh, straightforward which is simply the analysis expression and in that we are getting this x of e j omega inside the integration and we're going to integrate from minus pi to pi and this frequency response is multiplied with the exponential but right now instead of minus we have a plus here so e to the power plus j omega n and the integration variable is omega and then we are scaling it with 1 over 2 pi to achieve the discrete time signal again x of n. Now again as a summary any given discrete time signal x of n we can take the discrete time Fourier transform of it by this expression which is x of n e to the power minus j omega n with the summation and we can also achieve the inverse Fourier transform inverse discrete time Fourier transform of this function by means of this analysis expression or in, uh, integration. Now let us look into some examples to understand this concept further. Let us again consider that we have a system which is a simply delay system. So this z is indicating a delay and this integer value nd is defining the amount of delay. So again we are giving a complex exponential as an input that is e to the power j omega n and we are interested at the output which is y of n. So if this system is an ideal delay system so we can express it as an impulse response h of n which is a delta function because this delta function would define the amount of delay and that delay is nd. So delta of n minus nd is basically defining the impulse response of this delay system. So hence at the output y of n we have a convolution of this impulse response with the input x of n and from the convolution sum we have h of k times x of n minus k and that is h of k is simply this delta function which is over here delta of k minus nd whereas x is e j omega n minus k n minus k is coming from here so that's why it's appearing over here now as before this n is not a part of this integration so we can extract this out and we are left with this expression an important point to note over here is that this input e to the power j omega n is again repeating at the output so this is an eigenfunction and all of this is the eigenvalue. So this can be simplified further that is a delta function multiplied with any function but this delta function is now only available at nd. So this omega k this k would be changed to nd because of this delta function. So from the property of this delta function we have the fifth equality which is e to the power minus j omega nd. So that is this is our input which is the eigenfunction x of n and this is the simplified version of the frequency response or the system function which is h of e to the power j omega. And from here basically what we have achieved is we have achieved the discrete time Fourier transform of this that is h of e j omega is simply e to the power minus j omega nd. So this is the eigenvalue or the frequency response. So if we analyze further it has a magnitude of 1 
that is we over here we have the magnitude that is h e to the power j omega absolute value of it is the magnitude which is simply 1 and this part is the phase and that phase is omega nd the contrasting features from the continuous time frequency responses is that the discrete time frequency response that is h of e j omega is periodic with period 2 pi that is it is going to repeat after 2 pi interval and to prove that so let us again consider that h of e j omega is equal to h of e j omega plus 2 pi because we have claimed that it is periodic by a period of 2 pi so we take the right hand side and from the definition of discrete time convolution so we have a summation from minus infinity to infinity h of n e to the power minus j and this whole argument that is omega plus 2 pi n so in the second equality we can simply break this exponential into two parts that is we have e to the power minus j omega n and e to the power minus j 2 pi n but from here this expression would always be 1 for all integer values of n so an easy way to understand this is that you can plot a cos and, and a sine function so at each integer multiple of 2 pi that is at cos 2 pi cos 4 pi cos 6 pi you would have an output which is 1 but at the same time the sine function that is sine 2 pi sine 4 pi sine 6 pi and so on would have an output which is 0 and 1 plus 0 would give you a 1 so that's why this whole exponential is always going to give you a 1 so hence we can have the third equality with this simplification as a summation from minus infinity to infinity h of n e to the power minus j omega n and this is simply the definition of the discrete time Fourier transform of this impulse response h of n which is h of e j omega and this is the right hand side so this formulates the proof that the discrete time frequency response is periodic with period 2 pi now to understand further so we consider an example of ideal low pass filter in both the continuous time and discrete time systems so in the continuous time frequency response so we have this frequency response which can be expressed as hlp that is the low pass filter which is equal to 1 when omega is between minus omega c and omega c and it is 0 up towards infinity so this is an ideal low pass filter whereas in discrete time frequency response so this filter again would have a 1 between minus omega c and omega c and it would be 0 when the value is until pi until here and after that this whole thing from minus pi to pi would be repeating itself from pi to 3 pi and from 3 pi to 5 pi and so on so this is periodic so anything between minus pi to pi is again repeating from pi to 3 pi and so on